So I'm Professor Robert Griffin. I'm from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. I'm a chemistry professor. Uh, I teach physical chemistry at MIT. And uh, we have been working on dynamic nuclear polarization, or DNP, for about 30 years now almost, uh, since 1986 when we got our first NIH grant uh, to build the equipment to do dynamic uh, nuclear polarization. Well, what DNP will allow you to do, it won't, it won't have a direct impact on anyone's life, probably, uh, but it'll have a very, maybe a very important indirect impact. But it will allow us to do problems in structural biology that would otherwise be impossible. For example, there are many debilitating diseases related to amyloid fibrils, like Alzheimer's disease, type 2 diabetes, uh, Parkinson's disease, dialysis-related amyloidosis, and so forth and so on. There are about 25 total. And there's no other good way uh, to determine structures of these molecules other than magic angle spinning in MR. And what DNP will allow you to do is to do those structural determination experiments with a lot greater accuracy, precision, and at a, at a much higher rate. So we have three different spectrometers at 263 gigahertz, 395, and 527 for DMP experiments at 400, 600, and 800 megahertz uh, frequency. And we started out with the 263 gigahertz, which was very close in frequency to what Bob Griffin at MIT had previously developed. But the idea was to make it a commercial product. So go from an academic product to a commercial product. And once we did that, we then moved on to the two higher frequencies. The essential benefit is that we get much larger signal intensities than you would without DMP. And so this really opens up new opportunities for people. Uh, it wasn't uncommon in solid state and MR to spend two, three weeks signal averaging. You can now do the same experiment in just one day. But what's even more exciting is when people look at a sample that they couldn't have looked at at all without DMP. And so they can do a calculation and say it might take three years to do this experiment, and now all of a sudden they could do it. Bruker has sold three or four 800 megahertz spectrometers, 527 gigahertz. And a 1.2 gigahertz machine, 1.1, 1.2 gigahertz machine, um, they're on the drawing boards. And so the obvious thing to do would be to extend the techniques to those operating frequencies. The partnership with uh, collaborators is just absolutely critical right from the start with uh, Bob Griffin and Rick Temkin at MIT to really guide us and help us uh, design the instrument and then with the initial customers to demonstrate the applications and then continuing now. Uh, it's just really two factors. One is feeding back into the instrumentation design and then also guiding us towards the type of applications we might want to investigate.